Good morning, church. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Look forward to spending time together from a distance. Our goal is to honor um, our congregation. Even though we can't be together, we still want to um, ensure that we have some interaction as a congregation, um, see some familiar faces, hopefully, as a congregation during this time of, of separation. And so thank you for participating with us this morning as we try and do church from a distance um, together. And so, yeah, we look forward to, to being together and spending this time together. Thank you, Monica, for the worship package that you've uh, put together. And, and we are um, so looking forward to how God is going to move through us all um, as, as we go on from here. I want to greet you this morning out of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Paul greets the Corinthians church with these words, and I want to greet us with these words as well. I find them quite comforting and, and re reassuring uh, in this time. So 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 to 9. I always thank my God for you because of the grace of God given to you in Christ Jesus that you were enriched in him in every way, in all speech and all knowledge. In this way, the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you did not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you will not be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. You were called by him into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I hope you find those words comforting. Go back to that text and read it over for yourself again and let it, let it sink in. This past Sunday, um, we were supposed to be having the Prairie Wim Hope Women's Center uh, giving us an insight into their ministry and, and what's going on in their ministry. Um, God is doing amazing things uh, through, through that ministry to women who are very, very broken, um, needing restoration and reconciliation from oppression and from abuse and from victimization. And um, God, is, God is using that ministry to restore these women back to healthy places in their lives where they, where they can um, feel good about themselves again, but not only that, where they have found Christ and, and be able to, to move forward with purpose and meaning in their lives, even, even in consequence of their, of their past. And so we want to keep that ministry in the forefront of our minds as we continue to move forward. Um, our hope is to reschedule them for a service in the future when we can be back together and um, and celebrating gathering together uh, again. So yeah, looking forward looking forward to that. Just wanted to go through a few announcements this morning as well. Um, we just to make sure that you are keeping in tune with the church. Make sure that you are watching for emails. Uh, Mandy is sending out emails more frequently from the church, which is which is awesome just to keep us engaged and keep us um, aware of, of what's all going on. Uh, one of the things that wasn't uh, on in the emails um, this past week or on the email bulletin that you received, <clears throat> there will be a survey monkey coming out. Um, and also you'll have opportunity to do this on a hard copy paper as well. But just to, uh, it's a it's a survey on, your um, preferences for for the pastoral search committee in regards to full time, part time, um, or running our church the way it's it's presently being run, and so that is going to be coming out shortly next week, sometime I believe that that uh, survey will be coming out. Um, and again, you'll have the opportunity to do it either online through Mon Survey Monkey or uh, a hard copy. Want to encourage you to keep giving to the church. Um, I know we're 
a lot of people are experiencing financial difficulty and we appreciate that as a church and acknowledge that and um, but just want to make sure that as we're um, not meeting together and so the uh, offering plate isn't actually passing by us every every time we're together on Sunday this way we want to make sure that um, that is still part of your discipline as a as a believer and and member or of our congregation not just even a member but one of our congregants that that is still um, something that you keep in mind and and um, that where God leads you to give um, that you still have that opportunity to, to give and so we thank you for that I want to also remember Rock Solid Ministry um, and what's going on in their work down in southern Saskatchewan Mandy has um, sent an email uh, about that ministry some an update that um, has been brought forward for our congregation as well so I encourage you to read that as well it's very eye-opening and um, yeah it's um, encouraging to know what God is doing through through that ministry down in southern Saskatchewan um, just another reminder about what's going on with COVID-19 and just as a church we by law cannot meet together uh, as a matter of fact I think the new recommendations are no greater than 10 people um, from different households meeting together and so honestly the safest the safest thing for us to do is to remain um, distance from each other socially at this point in time in our lives um, until we can um, get a hold of, uh, of the effects of this virus. And so we just encourage you to keep being responsible, um, being socially responsible for um, and looking out for not just for ourselves, but, but for others as well. It's very important at this part in time, at this point in time. That brings us to prayer and praise and, and um, thank you Sylvia for um, responding to uh, the email that Mandy put out. I'm just going to read actually. Sylvia sent a praise item. Just so you know as a church, um, please if you have some prayer requests, praise items that you want the church body to know, this is going to be another venue that we do this. Those prayer and praise requests or items will be brought forward to Mandy through email. Or through text however you do it and um, we'll address them um, hopefully on a Sunday morning uh, like this or in somewhat of a format like this uh, for few future context so that we can pray together and be together in this and so I just want to read what Sylvia what Sylvia mentioned here she said this thank you Lord for my feelings of anxiety because it has allowed me to feel with those that are anxious and share with them what has eased my anxiety especially those that have not that do not have Jesus as their hope my anxiety has made me realize that I need to trust God completely and then she references Psalm 46 Deuteronomy 29 29 and Psalm 118 and she closes her praise with this when anxiety was great within me your consolation brought joy to my soul and that's out of Psalm 94, verse 19. So thank you, Sylvia, for that. I want to draw our attention uh, for prayer this week, again, to pray Hope Women's Center, to Rock Solid Ministries down in southern Saskatchewan. And, um, and again, um, prayer for um, our nation, our province, our world, um, as to what's going on. One thing I wanted to mention as well, just as we're on kind of the items of prayer, uh, Mandy sent a, um, a link what the Evangelical Free Church is doing for today actually. Um, a, as I'm drinking my coffee, um, sorry, but to promote a time where we are unified as the e free church in fasting and praying and so even if we've had our coffee this morning that's fine um, if we could spend the rest of the day fasting and praying there's a really really good link as to how and walk that walks us through as to how 
we could be fasting and praying at this time. And so I would encourage you to, to look at that and, and go through that um, for the rest of today. It would be a powerful thing if we, as a church, could be unified in, in, in those ways. So with all that said, let's uh, go to a time of prayer together. Um, and so, yeah, we are, let's, uh, let's just bow our heads and pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, you rule and reign over the whole earth. Nothing surprises you. And you promise to work all things together for good. We thank you, Jesus, for the power of your name. These are the truths that we hold on to in our times of anxiety. And as Sylvia reminded us, your consolation brings joy to our souls. And Father, we thank you for your mercy on us, that you are a God who forgives us and restores us. Forgive us, Father, for the sins and unbelief in our own lives that hinder us from experiencing you in a deeper way, that distract us from your glory. Would you cleanse us, Lord, and renew us? Make your face shine on us. And Lord Jesus, we pray for our world as well. Would you cause the world to turn to you in repentance? Would the world see you, Lord, reaching out to them so that your kingdom, Lord, would become the strong foundation upon which the world, which is so broken, would put its hope? Lord, there are hundreds of thousands suffering in our world, and we pray for healing in every nation, tribe, and tongue as they turn to you in repentance. Father, we think of the hurting close to us, the lives that are being touched by rock solid and prairie hope. Jesus, would you continue to work your power of healing and hope and restoration and newness of life in them? We lift them up. We lift up these ministries to you, Lord, and ask that you provide for them in all the resources they require, that we, you would continue to provide those, that they can continue their ministry. We, Lord, we thank you for your provisions for us. You promise us our daily bread, and you are the bread of life and the living water. Give us the ability to trust you in this time of financial uncertainty. Help us to continue to be generous to those around us, Lord. And we pray for our governments and our world leaders that you would give them wisdom to lead in a very difficult time to lead. Cause them to see you in all of this. And Jesus, we pray for the provision of health as well. For those who have fallen ill, would you become their great physician and heal them? You are the one who heals, and we call on you and plead with you to show yourself in a mighty way. We lift up those who are caring for the sick, directly and indirectly. Give wisdom and confidence. Give endurance and strength. Protect them as only you can, Lord. And Jesus, we pray for our church family here at OCC. I ask that you would cause each of us to experience you in a new and powerful way. Help us not to shrink back in our body. Keep us unified. Keep us engaged. Continue to give us longing for each other. Minister to us afresh this morning, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You know, as I've been contemplating on what's going on in the world, my spirit has taken me to <clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter 20. It's actually a passage I spoke on in fall. Um, and it's the story of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, who is facing an insurmountable storm by attack. Uh, three neighboring uh, armies are, have snuck up and they are ready to attack. They are literally um, a day's walk away. And in verse 3 um, of chapter 20, it says that um, King Jehoshaphat resolved to seek the Lord. And as his kingdom um, um, was doing this and praying to God, uh, God responded with an incredible promise of hope. Verse 17, it says, said, you do not have to fight this battle. This is what God is telling them. You do not have to fight this battle. Position yourselves 
Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. You may feel helpless at this time, maybe even useless um, during this time of social distancing. But I believe that we are being given the opportunity right now to take a position, to position ourselves, just like the E-Free um, Conference has asked us to do, to pos position ourselves in prayer. And I would invite you to watch this message um, that will be linked um, to the rest of this stuff uh, from Louis Giglio, who um, is a speaker that I really do enjoy listening to. And this message is called 20 Inches from Mercy. And so God bless as you, as you watch, listen, and pray today. Amen. Take care. Bye-bye.